Okay, so the next question was submitted by Richard. And uh, Richard asks, have your thoughts on berberine changed now that we know it can actually reduce cholesterol plaque? And I chose this question because it piqued my interest considering we have a topic page on berberine. I, I believe the topic page went live in maybe 2020. So um, it's certainly time for an update and we will be updating it now based on all the deep diving that we did um, to look into this question. And also I was interested in myself because, uh, you know, I'm always looking for alternative ways to improve cholesterol, LDL, to improve, you know, you know, plaque, plaque formation, disintegration, all of the above. All right. Before we dive in, I do want to mention that berberine can interact with a number of prescription drugs. So taking berberine along with medications that lower blood pressure um, might cause blood pressure to go too low. Um, Taking berberine along with medications that slow blood clotting might increase the risk of bruising and bleeding. So um, if someone decides to supplement with berberine, it it is something to discuss with with your physician, um, and and certainly if you are taking any prescription drugs, then it, it, you, you absolutely need to to talk about it with your physician because of the fact that berberine can interact with uh, a number of drugs. And um, what I'm going to talk about here obviously is not uh, medical advice. I'm just going to cover the scientific literature on on berberine in terms of. Um, things that are updated since the last time I've talked about it in another uh, Q&A episode and also on our topic page, our berberine topic page, which you can find at foundmyfitness.com forward slash topics and then just scroll to the B and you'll find berberine there. Um, There's a lot of animal studies. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dive into the animal studies. We will update the animal studies on the topic page, but there's a lot of animal studies that have shown berberine can significantly decrease plaque area and plaque macrophage content, which is um, which is definitely interesting. But I do want to focus on the human studies and the review of clinical data. So there's 44 different randomized controlled trials. So this was this is a 2023 publication. This is new. Um, it's a systematic review and meta-analysis of 44 different randomized controlled trials. The trials, basically, the age, the age, rate, age range of people in the trial were between 18 to 83 years. So really, everything from a young adult to an older adult. The dosage range of berberine was about 0.3 grams to 1.8 grams per day. So uh, quite high, um, although the 0.3 grams would be on the low end. And these clinical trials, um, there was a variety of ways they were done. In some instances, they were giving berberine in combination with other drugs like statins. And so the dosage range of statins were 10 milligrams to 80 milligrams per day. The treatment duration range was between seven days to two years. Okay, so um, when berberine was given alone, this was eight randomized controlled trials, and there was a sample size of about 804 people. Berberine alone significantly reduced... A variety of things compared to routine routine therapy. So what it did, what did it reduce? It reduced what's called the NIH stroke scale. So this is a quantitative measure of stroke related neurologic deficit. So berberine was able to reduce the tests that are given to quantify stroke related neurologic deficit. Berberine decreased high sensitivity C-reactive protein. It decreased interleukin-6, IL-6. This could be a pro-inflammatory cytokine. Uh, it is a pro-inflammatory cytokine. 
Um, it also decreased tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha, um, you know, which plays a, a role in inflammation. These play a role in atherosclerosis as well. Both, you know, all of the th all three of these inflammatory molecules. So it seems as though berberine is reducing inflammation, inflammatory um, biomarkers, and it reduced the the quantitative measure of you know stroke related you know deficit. Now, when berberine, so berberine compared to um, a routine or routine routine care or um, statins, it reduced what's called the intima media thickness. So this is, it's basically a quantitative index of atherosclerosis. And it's a, it's a, a value that is used to monitor disease progression and also the effects of treatment. So it's kind of like, it's used a lot in clinical studies because if you can decrease the intima, the, the intima uh, media thickness, the IMT, then it's, that is a marker that it, the treatment is beneficial for atherosclerosis, either in preventing or in uh, reducing perhaps atherosclerotic plaque as well. So berberine seemed to also um, significantly reduce that, um, the intima media thickness, which again is, is really a marker of atherosclerosis, atherosclerotic plaque. Um, their statins also did the same and also um, standard treatment did it. So it, it's interesting that berberine also did it. Now, there was no differences in berberine alone versus either statins or um you know, the routine of care in improving total cholesterol, triglycerides, low density lipoprotein, high density lipoprotein. So this, so basically this is, um, you know, berberine was still having a positive effect on them, but it wasn't doing it more than statins or the routine care. I, to me, that's uh, interesting because um, if you can still, have an effect on a positive effect on all the things that statins is, then why not try berberine? Um, I mean, that's kind of what I would go to. That's where I naturally go first. Berberine plus statins or versus statins alone. Um, so there was, you know, either giving statins with berberine or not, or just giving statins alone. There were a, it seems as though there were a number of, um, of benefits, so berberine combined with statins significantly re reduced again that that um, that stroke score. So looking at the you know potential damage from from stroke, the NIH stroke stroke score was reduced from um, when adding berberine to statins compared to statins only. Uh, there was no significant difference in the inflammatory biomarkers like IL six when doing statins versus berberine plus statins. But remember, berberine alone did reduce IL-6. So it just wasn't reducing it when someone was already taking statins. It wasn't reducing it even more than what the statins was already reducing it. So statins are also reducing IL-6. The, the intima media thickness level was also decreased significantly in the berberine um, plus statins group. So again, it seems as though that berberine could be a promising alternative therapy for atherosclerosis, um, perhaps ischemic stroke, and coronary heart disease, considering it, the benefits it has on, you know, anti-hyperlipidemia. So, you know, the triglycerides, cholesterol, um, the effect it's having on the NIH stro strokes um, score, its effects on anti-inflammatory, its anti-inflammatory effects, so lowering all those inflammatory cytokines and its effects on the IMT score. So that was the progression of atherosclerosis. So it's, it's, so it's basically able to, to, to decrease the progression of it and without really any serious adverse reactions. But also it seems as though berberine could be an adjunctive, um, potential adjunctive, have an adjunctive role to uh, basically people with statin intolerance because it might improve the efficacy of statins by lowering the dosage and perhaps even reducing the side effects because the statin dosage may be lowered. Um, obviously, this, this is early. I mean, more studies are going to 
we need to be done on this before it be, is adopted, I think, into routine uh, clinical practice. But I do think it is something to you know, bring up to a physician for people that are um, taking statins. In fact, um, you know, I'm actually people that I know, I'm going to send them these studies and then tell them to talk to their uh, physician as well. I also was convinced um, that I would like to start testing berberine on myself. So I did already place an order for berberine um, from Thorn, And I also got some from my mother who um, has a higher risk for coronary heart disease and she's got higher triglycerides, although the omega-3, she's been um, able to, to improve that with omega-3. She's been taking the Luvesa and also she's got higher LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol. And so I'm curious to see how berberine will affect her um, lipid levels as well. So I went ahead and ordered um, a few bottles of that for for the family. There was a, some safety evaluation as well um, in in the meta analysis of these trials, and people, so patients that were receiving berberine, berberine alone appeared to have um, significantly lower risk of lins, liver enzyme abnormalities and um, myalgia compared to those receiving statins. So that's really interesting and um, needs to be investigated further. Again you know, whether or not people on statins could they could be combining berberine to lower their statin dose and perhaps lower the, the, the negative and adverse side effects um, is very interesting. Also, um, there was no GI effects with people taking berberine. Compared to patients receiving statins, those receiving berberine plus statins seem to have a lower risk of abnormal liver enzymes, again, um, and, and the myalgia. So all in all, I think, you know, the, the, this is in the big greater context of things, this is still limited evidence. Even though we're looking at 44 different randomized controlled trials, there needs to be more before this is adopted into clinical, routine clinical practice. But I do think um, for, for people like, you know, myself, I'm interested in definitely trying and also experimenting with my mother who has higher cholesterol as well and she is not on a statin so um and then you know people that are on statins could ask their physician and 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 try it out if if they get the okay and see if um, what berberine does and whether or not they could even lower their dose of statin i think um, all very interesting there's there's some interesting stuff i'm not going to get into i'm going to update the topic page on berberine um, potential potentially um lowering the TMAO production in the gut. And um, a lot of this is animal work. And so again, uh, needs to be taken with a grain of salt. And that's why I'm not really gonna get into it. There's one study that was in about 50 people, one clinical study. It was not a randomized controlled trial, um, of course. So it's not, I mean, you're talking one study, not even, a, not even a randomized controlled trial. So again, not very high quality evidence, nothing to, you know, to, to really make, draw any conclusions on. But again, seems to be um, indicating that berberine may really um, improve the progression of atherosclerosis in people um, with atherosclerosis that were not undergoing any drug treatment. And um, so take a look at the topic page if you want to kind of dive dive even further into this because I'm, I'm not going to talk about all that stuff. But there's, some, there's a lot of interesting uh, updates that we will be making to that topic page. And I am going to be supplementing with berberine and I'm going to be checking um, – all my lipids and cholesterol and um, I mean my inflammatory biomarkers are, are just rock bottom low so I don't there won't be any difference there but I will be curious to see how it affects my LDL. Um, Ed and Twilia are asking if you need to skip berberine on workout days. Um, I so it you know we cover a lot of stuff in the topic page so the, the way I plan on supplementing with berberine is I will take it uh, in the evening. So I do, I do my exercise in early morning. I mean, we're talking before 9 a.m. typically. And 
most of my supplements I take with dinner. Um, and so I, you know, when you're talking many hours after the exercise, the, the biggest, the biggest, I would say, um, you know, risk of taking supplements, you know, is, is within the one, you know, immediately after, you know, to maybe three hours after exercise. And once you start to get four or five hours after, you know, you've generated the inflammatory response, the oxidative response has been generated without blunting it, that has activated genetic pathways. And, um, and so you're not going to be dampening that, you know, if you're taking, if you're taking it several hours after that. 